Welcome back everybody. Um, I hope you've had a chance to digest a little bit of what's uh, the many, many um, bits of information that I've been throwing at you. Now, the next step, and I think this is quite an important step, is to start to play with these different techniques. And one way I do this is to put a piece of paper down on your board, tape round it, I hadn't realised it got dirty, but tape round it, I've got a piece down the middle here, so divide it up into manageable sections and then I'm going to look at using different techniques and as I mentioned right at the very beginning of the, the videos that here I've used um, blues and greens but you could just use black or Payne's grey you, because if whatever you use influences what the picture, you decide the picture eventually is. Um, looking back at what I did before, I can't remember them, but here you can see how I've just been playing and dripping and moving. It doesn't have to be a picture. The important thing is that you're getting to use the paint and know how it works. So for this first one, I'm going to start off with some blue. Move this in a bit. So wet your brush, bang it on the bottom so it's completely wet. Scrape it off, pick the colour up. And I'm going to run that horizontally over the paper and I'd like it to be dry brush. So in order to ensure it is, I'm going to take some of the colour off just by dabbing my brush on the tissue. Then horizontally going backwards and forwards to create in this case I'm after something that might look like cloudy sky but that's that's my first step then I'm going to put a tiny bit of green into my blue to make it a little bit more sea like so let's get a piece of water a little bit of water a bit more green a greeny blue and scrape my brush so it's not too wet. Now, just check that that isn't wet. I know, I know it's not going to be for me because it's dry brush, it was a dry brush technique and there's very, very little paint, but you don't want where the horizon line is to be wet. Now I'm going to apply the, the paint, running straight across. If you have trouble doing a straight line, then you can always dry that thoroughly and put down a little bit of tape. If you get tape and lie that down, you can then position it where you want your horizon line to be, paint up against it, and then carefully peel it, peel it off. And so for me there, that, I hadn't got it pushed down enough and it's given me a, a bump, but never mind, I'll just get rid of that. Then I'm going to come down. As, you, as I come down, I can vary the colour, so I might make it a bit bluer. And then it's come to dry brush again. I like that. I'm going to have the foam of the water there. I'm going to put some more in there. Say so it's not too wet. Lovely. So I'll leave it at that. Wash my brush thoroughly, banging it at the bottom of the pot so I know that all that blue is out. Scrape it. Then pulling the colour. This time I've got raw sienna. So mix your raw sienna and scrape a little bit off. And then I'm going to run that, then get a bit stronger. A bit stronger still and because this is meant to be sand I'm going to sprinkle some salt on it which I'm hoping will give me a nice effect. What I didn't mention in the earlier I realise is that with the salt once it has dried 
you then rub the salt off with your hand. You don't need to leave it on your picture, you can rub it off. Okay, so that's our, our little seascape, very, very simple. Um, so do have a go at that. Now I'm going to do another one in this section and slide my board across a bit. And for my horizon, now where I've got a, a blob of paint there, I'm just going to use clear water. If you just, I mean, it's not going to matter because it's going to go under a dark blue, but if you just scrub it a little bit with a clean brush and blot it, oh dear, preferably with a clean tissue. It's going from bad to worse, isn't it? Let's have another go. Right, I'm going to wet it and blot it and then we will carry on and you'll see that that is going to disappear underneath my picture. Now, my horizon, I'm going to bring my horizon up here and use a bit of tape and I'm going to go for some nice strong blue sky and this time I'll keep that even colour but then I'll get a little bit of tissue and just dab in some clouds. I'm going to just lift that so you can see I've got a nice straight horizon line. Now this is all going to be the sea so I'll be able to cover up this mess because it's going to be much darker and then I'm going to run my sand at an angle and to remind myself I'm going to paint pencil rather very lightly that this is going to be my, my the edge of my sea. If I've done my line too dark can just lightly go over it with my putty rubber to knock, knock that line back. Now like before, I'm going to use raw sienna down here, but first of all, I'm going to make a brown by mixing these colors together. So if I get a bit of green, a bit of red, sorry, a bit of blue, and then I'm going to add a little bit of red so as I was saying earlier, if you get your red, yellow and blue colours, see if you can mix browns and greys because they're, you can get them from red, yellow and blue. Now I've got my brown, I'm going to scoop it up, it needs, I can tell already it needs to be a bit wetter otherwise it's not going to flick. I'll scoop it up, I'm going to protect this side of my picture, let me move that. So I'm going to run that diagonally down here and flick. I'm flicking quite a lot because I want to build it up. Okay, then I'll remove that. Dry it off and then we'll move on to the water. So next I want to apply some um, toothbrush spray over the top here. So if I get my toothbrush, wet it thoroughly tap the excess water off and then really scrub it so the whole head of the toothbrush is in the paint. Then point it down, I find it easiest if I point it vertically at my palette to test and run your finger from the palette end upwards. If you have it at an angle it's going to spray ahead of you. So you want it vertically pointing directly down to where you actually want the paint. Then I'll protect my water edge again. 
a torn piece of paper and then spray, spray, spray. Okay, so I've now got my sand. Then the water, I'm going to take more blue and a little bit of green like before. I feel I need to dilute that so it's lighter. So let's put some over here, that's better. And then scrape your brush so it's not too strong. I'm going to run that across. If you feel in danger of smudging this, then do dry that first. So you can see how I'm getting the, the white of the paper coming through. So that's nice. And then vary the colour just slightly. I'm going to put some more colour in. I'll say just slightly and then I go in with dark blue. Hello, Casper. Down, darling, down. So let me get that. Try and get that straight. Should have put the tape back on, but never mind. Okay, and then I come down. Pull that colour in. Now this edge is going to be sprayed um, again with the toothbrush and flicking to get some white foam so that'll all be softened. While that's drying I'm going to come back to this first picture and on top of the sea I've got some lovely blues and turquoises in a watercolour pencil and oil pastel that I can add I'm going to do some slightly wiggly lines and then I'll do some turquoise. Oh, look at that, it's lovely. So I'm going, keeping it more horizontal and some dark blue, particularly in the distance, I think the dark blue works nicely. Um, I'll leave that one as it is, just so that we've got contrast of something a bit different. Now this down the bottom here I've got my salt which is now dry so I can just rub that off so you can see how it's left a nice little texture. Coming back to this one I'm going to have to dry it so if you give me a second so first Along the edge here where the water would have come up onto the sand and receded and left it wet, I'm just going to run my brush along here so it gives a slightly different shade. So that will be my wet sand. Within the sea itself I'm going to put some more marks. So I'm going to run my brush. One thing you can do with these gorgeous brushes is you can play around with getting a thick, thin effect. I'll just put a space them out a bit more down here. I'll show you on the back of this sheet here. If you have, you'll run your brush along and then you apply pressure and then you come up again gradually you're going to get these lovely thick, thin, thick, thin lines which will, which are really useful when you've got this situation but you can also do leaves and so on. So that's sort of another video really but just so you know. Okay, I'll dry my sea and then we'll finish off this picture with some sea spray. So for the spray, I'm going to protect each side OK, 
Okay. I want to come up a little bit into the blue. Then I'm going to get my toothbrush again with some white. And I lost my toothbrush, here we go. And some white gouache. So this time, as before, you've got your paint, your neat paint. I'm going to wash my brush, tap off the excess water, scrub it the whole thing, making sure the whole thing is completely covered in the paint. Hold it vertically and test the spray. All right, that looks good. If you get any drips of water, then go back to the water pot and tap it again really, really well. Now let me readjust these. So I just want to catch the edge of the blue there and the edge of the sand. So let's go down here. So I've masked the area that I want to, want to spray well. Move that away. Yeah, that's nice. And then I'm just going to add a tad more just so that it's not just one long straight line. Okay, so that's our, our little picture for today. Um, so I hope you enjoy painting that. Anything, remember, everything you do is worthwhile because it's all learning. So please don't be hard on yourself, just get used to using the paint, try it very wet, try it very dry and try mixing and using all these little techniques and you'll find when you peel your tape off at the end of your picture it always looks better. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what we have achieved. Take it. One little tip is when you're peeling off your tape if it resists or hopefully not, but if it started to tear your paper, just get the hair dryer and warm it slightly. It warms the glue and enables it to peel off more easily. So I'll just take that off. So there we have today's little pictures.